Getting banned in Fortnite is no easy feat. In fact, it's not even a feat. It's not a feat by any standard, but it's certainly easier than you'd expect, especially when pro players are more or less the ones in some cases even promoting indirectly the use of exploits. Wait, pro players? How could they do such a thing? My favorite streamer is the best streamer ever. They would never. Sorry you had to find out this way, little Jimmy, but in some cases they do promote the use of exploits. So we compiled this list to make sure you don't get banned. I got banned. Come on, Jimmy. What did we just talk about? Now, here are some of the easiest ways to get banned in Fortnite Season 7 that you'll want to be aware of. Or you could just get the ban hammer. And you don't want that. Also, smash like, subscribe to us, and then PewDiePie in that specific order. And you'll instantly be entered to win a can of fresh air or bath salts. Now... Onto the more important matter at hand. Let's get into the list. Number five. So not just glitching, but exploiting bugs of any kind. With every new season, we usually get a whole new series of glitches and exploits that Fortnite will slowly fix to make it perfect. But a lot of these glitches that get discovered result in a fair amount of people abusing them to gain that advantage in battle and rack up the kill feed, which in turn can easily get you banned. One of the most common glitches that maps within all games struggle to avoid is being able to get under or outside the map area. We saw its first discovery within Fortnite at Fatal Fields last year, and even though these keep popping up throughout the seasons, Epic Games always patch it in the end. This season's under the map areas weren't just excluded to certain locations. Using the planes, you could glitch yourself under the map nearly anywhere you wanted, although it wasn't exactly the most reliable method. There's even been instances where people suddenly drop through polar peaks and land just underneath the map. There's also the demolition glitch that would cause everything on the map that you touch to instantly break. You could plow through tilted towers, knocking down buildings left and right without having to slow down, and it was also super OP against someone who was attempting to turtle up. You don't even need to make a play when you can just buy through the wall shotgun ready. Fortnite have commented on glitches like this in the past, though stating that those players abusing glitches and exploits will face consequences and that they look at each case with their own analytics. If it's all an accident and just an unlucky mistake, then you've got nothing to worry about. But if you end up using these spots to shoot down your opponents, then be prepared to get hit with the ban hammer. So if you guys are watching this video and you've attempted to use exploits, then chances are you might be struggling with battles with other really skilled players players. The only way to compete with the pros is to be taught with the pros by using ProGuides.com. ProGuides are the ones who helped make this video possible. A lot of people ask us on a daily basis how we constantly come out with all these crazy strategies to dominate in Fortnite for the epic victory royale. And, and while our stuff is usually pretty up to date, the fastest way to learn the new meta is to learn from the source. And if you're looking to take Fortnite more seriously, go to events or stop your friends from making fun of your skill. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Trevor. We know you're getting made fun of, and we know you hit the default dance at school. Learn how to be a Fortnite pro from Fortnite Pros by checking out ProGuides.com, the ideal place for Fortnite tips and courses to get better. Number four, stream sniping. It's a topic highly used and discussed throughout the whole of Fortnite on YouTube and Twitch. Whether you're a streamer getting stream sniped or you're the one doing the stream sniping, we've kind of seen it all by now. People creating mass lobbies, attempting to kill their favorite streamer, and even making friends for life. Streamer King Richard has a stream sniper called King Richard's Loot that constantly drops him items and weapons. You've got YouTuber Loserfruit, whose stream sniper Lee does a similar thing, but what is it exactly about stream sniping that gets people banned? Well, for one, it's obviously stream sniping with a malicious intent, purposely using your opponent's stream to either hunt them down or to give yourself the advantage in a match against them. Then you've also got a form of brief teaming when they try to help each other. It seems like Epic Games are more lenient with that side of it, though, as it can create some amazing moments within the game without having any malicious or negative effect on the other players. After all, in most cases, it is just a brief moment, but even for streamers that Garver mass stream sniping lobbies together seem to be given a free pass. In fact, they seem to like the ideas as the new creative mode can hold up to 16 players at a time, and I'm sure as the game progresses, they may even increase that number to help recreate those similar moments in a legitimate and controlled environment. Fortnite have included their own defensive measure for streamers by including stream remote giving streamers the ability to hide their username from everyone on the map while also hiding everyone else's name. Works okay for some streamers, but when you're trying to advertise your stream, making your identity essentially invisible probably isn't the best solution. Holy Jesus. Holy Jesus. Is he still in retail? He just killed someone. He just killed someone. He's fighting someone. He just got- he's fighting someone. I just enter retail. I just enter retail. I just enter retail. Bro, please! What? 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 I see him! I just. You died? Oh, I see your laser! He's hurt, bro. He's hurt. You he's hurt. hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. I'm fighting you, fucking ninja! <laughs> <laughs>
Number three is buying and selling accounts. This time, Fortnite don't show any leniency. Not for buying and selling accounts anyway. But for most people in Fortnite, you probably don't have much idea about the subject except for what the name suggests, that you can buy and sell accounts. You've most likely been leveling up and earning those skins and emotes from the battle pass with your own hard work. And if you have been, then I salute you. Nice job. In fact, the most we've really seen on the subject is certain big streamers and content creators like Tifu and Latency getting banned for buying and account sharing. That's right, it's not just buying and selling accounts that can get you banned, it's also sharing your account. Part of the Fortnite Terms of Service states that you may only access services through your own account. Users do not own their accounts and gifting or otherwise transferring of accounts or access keys is strictly prohibited. So essentially there's a system in place here that is to protect people's accounts but also means it's exclusive to you alone. Doesn't matter if your friend's miles away and wants to try out a new skin that you've got, the fact is that you could end up getting banned and having all of your hard work wiped away by sharing your account. And in all honesty, I don't know if it's a risk that I'd be willing to take. Number two, team killing and griefing or being toxic. Yes! Would you believe it? Being extremely toxic towards your teammates or any player within earshot is always going to result in you getting banned eventually. It's actually fairly common knowledge, although you still find one person every now and then that pops in and starts cursing out the lobby. Perhaps they're raging and chucking all sorts of prejudice remarks and possible aggression towards their teammates for not being better at the game. But in any case, they end up getting banned if they keep it up. Sometimes it might be one incident in particular that's so bad they end up getting banned just for that. Some players even just outright kill their teammates. It's been an issue with Fortnite since day one. One, but there's not a lot they can particularly do or say about that. Due to certain mechanics within nearly all multiplayer games, it's simply unavoidable. Take the editing ability, for example. If you and your teammates are up high enough or over the edge of the map, you can edit a hole to drop them down to their death. But now with the ability to report people, team killing has died down a little bit, especially since the impulses were vaulted. However, let's not forget about good old-fashioned griefing, the one that can really get on your nerves. It's kind of a middle ground between team killing and being toxic. Maybe you're about to take on a squad and your teammate book is you in the back on purpose trying to get you killed. Now, with Season 7's return of the bounce pads, you can be sure to find a bunch of trolls bouncing their teammates into the enemy off a mountain. The thing is, these are pretty much all bannable offenses if someone decides to report you. Don't be that troll, people, unless you and your friends are all trolling each other, then it's all good. Honorable mention is teaming. It's always going to be a savage way to die when you get two people double team you on solos, but at the same time, it feels pretty good if you turn the tables and nail them both. Now, teaming has been a bannable offense since the beginning of the game, so it's only a matter of enough people reporting before they get banned. As we mentioned earlier, though, small brief encounters that cause no negative effect for the other player in the game will be given a pass by Fortnite in some cases. The fact that they want people to enjoy the game and create new experiences just as much as we do, but they have to put safeguards in it to make sure it maintains that level of fun for everyone. One, but at this very same time, they can't be too lenient or people will start abusing the system. With Season 7 having a barrage of new limited time modes, you tend to find a lot more teamers than in normal mode. Especially with game modes like Sniper Shootout, people will approach each other dancing, trying to join up and create bigger teams. Maybe it's because it's an LTM and sometimes they don't count towards your stats, but it definitely feels like people get away with teaming a lot more in some LTMs. At the end of the day, there's no real specifics on what degree of teaming will get you banned, even if it's for a brief moment to dance with each other or a full on four-man solo sniper squad. All we really know is that teaming in general is a bannable offense, so I think it's best to keep those interactions short and sweet and be sure to kill each other if you're not on the same team. Number one is cheating and hacking. For actual cheats within the game, there hasn't been much this season unless you include a giant god-like Infinity Blade. That might count a little. Hacks, on the other hand, have pretty much been unstoppable. Well, they do get stopped, but they've been improved or updated, and then it becomes this never-ending cycle of continuously out-updating each other. The fact is, hacks will probably be around for a long time. You've seen in the past how badly hacks can affect the game, whether they're destroying an entire lobby in the blink of an eye or hitting every shot fired with a dink to the head, even while they're still jumping around. Out of all the bannable offenses on Fortnite, I'd say hacking and buying an account sharing probably have the most likely tendency to get you banned, but that's just a guess. In all honesty, you don't really run into many hackers and there's a lot of people that still haven't seen one, but with the Winter Royale competition that recently came up that allowed anyone to join, there was a surge in the amount of people hacking, people probably thinking they could get away with it. Since then, it's died down a bit, but it seems more frequent than it was before, which just be careful out there in Season 7 Winter Wonderland, guys. The hackers are taking over and you don't want to be involved in any of that or get your accounts banned. So, this has been the top five easiest ways to get banned in Fortnite Season 7 for your information. Click that like button if you've enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel right now. If you're new, push notifications on. Be sure to smash that bell. Happy New Year's if you're watching this on New Year's, everybody. Keep it here on top five. What was it? Gaming.